Uh, one of the reasons I love the West Coast is people here ask me if I want marijuana rather than if I have marijuana. You understand? Right? Everywhere else I go, people are like, man, you got any weed? Man, I don't know you. Yeah, all right, come on. You want a brownie? I, I don't want a brownie right now because I'm talking to people. Uh, once I no longer have to talk to people, I will eat all of your brownies. And then I'll have crazy hashish lace dreams. Um, what were we talking about? Weed? For me, weed is the umami flavor of life. You understand? Right? Weed is the soy sauce. Weed is the ketchup. Weed is the ranch dressing of doing shit. Right? Some shit is cool. You put some weed on it, it's a little bit cooler. Right? Maybe it's not cool at all. Dip it in some weed, it's all right. Right? I don't care to wash dishes, but I don't mind getting high and washing dishes. Right? It's actually very pleasant. It takes an extra hour, because I have to make a plate. Thank you, Ed. Let's hear it for New Jersey Weed Man, by the way. Who says people in New Jersey are rude? That was very polite. He brought me a joint and a lighter. Now he's going to smoke it for me, right? I will pass to the left. Mm. That's delicious. Is that a... Uh, the, the terpenes. It's got some purpoline and some sizzling in there. Right? I can taste the Listerine. This is going to make your breath great. This has great effects on breath. <laughs> oh, look at all these old, older people. We're all getting old, right? Some of us been here. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. This is what I noticed. Weed keeps you cute. Old stoners are way cuter than old drunks. Right? You know what I'm talking about? That's what I'm saying. Everyone's like, oh, cute. Grandpa's hitting the bong again. Right? As opposed to grandpa's hitting your mom again. That's a completely different. That's why. That's why I like weed. Let's see if I can figure out where it's from with my chronosaur palate. You guys don't. You don't do chronosaur. You don't sit around with your fancy pants. Give some tasting notes. That's from New Jersey, right? This is Toledo. Was it uh, Toledo Window Box? <laughs> that's the old George Carlin. Somebody from Bellingham. This is the old elephant and castle weed. It's the Bellis Fair, bud. Right? Someone swam over the river from Canada. I don't even know how you get to Canada from here. Practice. But everybody's fancy with the weed now. It's all like, oh, you know, everybody like has tasting notes. This delightful train wreck has notes of limonene and munchies. I don't know. People just make shit up. It's all so crazy. Who's in charge of naming weed, by the way? Do we need weed named Green Crack? Do you want weed that makes you act like crack? That's not cool. Let's change it up. Naming weed after people is also weird. My boy called me up the other day, right? He's like, hey, man, I crossed a white widow with a train wreck. I call it Courtney Love. <laughs> that joke always kills in Seattle. Oh, take your time. <laughs> right, but people, there was weed named after Charlie Sheen for a minute. Charlie Sheen is not a weed head. Charlie Sheen is a crackhead. Would you smoke weed that makes you act like a crackhead? No, you wouldn't. I'm good on the Charlie Sheen. Do you have some Willie Nelson in the back, perhaps? Right? <laughs> Let me get an eighth of the Miles Davis. Right, a half ounce of some Jerry Garcia. Right? And a couple of grams of Snoop, because I'm going to a party later. And we don't love these hoes. And there's Obama Kush. That shit gets you so high, you stare off into space like a president. Thank you. Right? We need more minorities in the cannabis industry, by the way. Can you guys work on that? Can we work on that? Uh, you can help me fund my new business. I got a new business. We're gonna, uh, it's a minority-staffed cannabis concentrates extraction company. Black Lives Shatter. I wrote that joke Friday. You can kiss my ass if you don't like it. Here, I'm hogging. Somebody hand that around. I don't want to be that guy. Right, all of a sudden you get, I have the weed, the joint, and the microphone, then I'm really just like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You're like, that joint, I'll give you your lighter back too, all right. Because I will take your lighter, right? If I leave the house with three lighters, I come home with three lighters. 
They're not always the same three lighters. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's conservation of lighters. <laughs> lighters are neither created nor destroyed. They just spontaneously generated in liquor stores. <laughs> and Costco's. You guys know what I'm, I'm high as fuck. I'm getting to that rambly point. See, there's probably some hash happened this morning. I just ramble. You ever ramble? Like, see, I can smoke weed and come out and tell jokes. I practice that. But hash makes me rambly like an old hippie. You know what I mean? You ever hang out? Well, those cats digress, right? Shit gets, it gets tangential. You know what I mean? You ask him how to make a pie, he'll tell you how to grow a tree. Right? Oh, you want my apple pie recipe, man? That's great. That's fantastic. We've been friends long enough. I think you're ready. Uh, the first ingredient is love. Listen, I know it sounds corny, man, but people don't say it enough, and everybody acts like it doesn't matter. And if you don't start with love, it's never gonna taste right. So write that shit down first. You start with love, and then it's two cups of apples. I recommend a cross or a mix of the Fuji and the pink lady. The Fuji comes from Japan, which is interesting. It's one of the older variations. It started in Kazakhstan, which is the birthplace of all apples. I was in Kazakhstan one time after college because I followed the Silk Road on my vision quest, and it was there in this little hut that I met this cat. I think he was like a Uyghur or Uyghur or whatever, but he had this hash. It was all brown and crumbly and delicious and kind of spicy. It smelled like cinnamon. It's two teaspoons of cinnamon. <laughs> And you mix that, it just went on and on for days and days and days. Let's talk about crust, brother. Follow me, I wanna show you these seeds I got from my friend Running Bear. I met him at a rainbow gathering in Wyoming in 1982, and we stayed up all night. We did psilocybin and mescaline, and we hybridized these gluten-free seeds, but they keep a flaky crust because the government's fucking up the food supply. Now look, what are your intentions with this pot? Is this a pie of wooing or a pie of, it affects the nutmeg. Right? It took a week and a half. And, and it took me five years to actually make that pie. But it was the best pie I'd ever had in my life because I was finally ready for it, right? My tree had grown. I'm glad you stoners could hang on for the end of that story. I know it gets hard out there sometimes. Wait, what? How much cinnamon? <laughs> Uh, I'm a good cook though, I love to cook. I'm a good cook because of weed, right? Because I don't have a lot of money, so I will invent some shit to eat. You understand? If we have Bisquick and peanut butter, we got peanut butter rolls coming in 10 to 12 minutes. You know what I'm talking about? 12 to 14, really, I read the box. I looked in the pantry one time, we had marshmallows, margarine, and top ramen. I'm making ramen treats. They were hella good too. Don't use the flavor packet, that'll fuck it up. It's not a savory dish. I'm glad you guys know what Top Ramen is because sometimes you get an upscale crowd in Bellevue or some shit. I like to walk around Bellevue, people stare at me. Is he a Seahawk? I don't recognize him. He... Maybe he's a coach. He's kind of old to be on the team. But I say something about Top Ramen, they just stare at me like brr, brr, Right, I had to break it down to a crowd once. I was like, well, y'all know Cup of Noodles, right? Uh-huh, well, I can't afford a fucking cup. <laughs> I'm just trying to get old noodles, you understand? All right, this is day three of the Seattle Hemp Fest, so I've been pretty much high for 72 hours. Uh, yeah, right, you guys are like, woo, it's good for the arthritis. Right, medical marijuana, I have my card. It helps my pretendinitis. I, uh, <laughs> it keeps my stress levels down because getting arrested fucks with my stress. Do uh, you understand? Right? It's an anti-inflammatory. <laughs> right? It keeps me from inflaming on people. Um, <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. I love weed. I, I smoke weed all the time, whenever I'm done. I just like, that's my whole thing. People are always like, pot smokers never do anything. I'm like, I always like to get high and then do something. That's always my like, you get high and go to hemp fest, or you get high and tell some jokes, or you get high and get some booty or whatever. I don't care, the smoky pokey's great. But I'm saying, like I'm on the golf course, high as shit, and nobody cares. Here's the secret about the golf course. The golf course is like a little tiny Vegas. You can do pretty much whatever you want. It's, I, no one ever said, even in states where weed is illegal, no one has ever said shit to me about my incessant use of marijuana whilst on the links. And I don't think they will. What would they say? They're gonna go over to the gay marshal. Hey, that black guy with dreadlocks has a bag of weed. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
right? You got a whiskey and a cigar. I got a blood and a Diet Coke. It's a beautiful day. We are all having a wonderful time out here. Keep your head down. One time, I'm out on the links in Sacramento. I got paired up with this random middle-aged white dude. It's me and him on the golf course. We're right around the third hole. It was trying to smooth it out, right? Dial it in, lock it down, right? So I pulled out a fat hoot. I took a couple puffs. I did the neighborly thing. Hey, man, you want to hit? No, thank you. But do you have any crack? <laughs> what? No, sir. And might I add, I find your presumptuousness somewhat off-putting. Because that's how I talk when I'm mad. I'm very precise. And secondly, who the fuck smokes crack on the golf course? What the fuck? That's not going to help your swing. You can't. <laughs> right drug for the right activity. That's my point. Right? Weed and golf makes sense. Booze and golf makes sense. Crack and golf don't make a lick of sense. You understand? You don't do a bunch of crank and go to a chess tournament. <laughs> right? You don't eat a bunch of mushrooms and try to run a marathon. <laughs> what do you mean I'm off course? <laughs> this whole planet is off course. <laughs> I see through your whole thing, man. Why am I wearing a number? I'm not a number. <laughs> Can't run a marathon on mushrooms. Take you three days. Laughing and crying the whole time, right? <laughs> crying because your feet hurt and laughing because you're happy to have feet. That's how mushrooms work. They teach you the dichotomy, the necessariness of the yin and the yang, and why one must have a hint of the other. That's what it taught me. Some of you just dance around like assholes, uh, which is also cool. 